So we're going to talk about four um, bacterial diseases, a plague, leprosy, tuberculosis, and methicillin-resistant staph aureus. So black plague um, caused by bacteria called Yersinia pestis. It's a disease that um, basically killed about one-third of the population of Europe in the Middle Ages. Outbreaks of uh, most recent outbreak of Black Plague uh, was in Madagascar a couple of years ago in the US. It was in 1924 uh, It's still, still this disease can be found in southwestern US, Arizona, California, um, Colorado, New Mexico, as far up north as Idaho, actually. So humans become infected um, when they are bitten by an infected flea. We have to say that humans are not usual hosts for the disease. The reservoir, this disease, is rodents, like prairie dogs. So flea bites a prairie dog and then bites humans, transmits the infection to humans. And then uh, three scenarios can happen. One scenario uh, is bubonic plague. So a few days after the bite, uh, people develop fever, uh, swollen lymph nodes, confusion, and um, lymph nodes become not only swollen, they become black and necrotic. This is called bubo. And uh, if it's untreated, it's most likely going to kill the patient, but um, plague is very easily uh, treated and cured by streptomycin or tetracycline. If um, the bacteria were inhaled instead of being transmitted by a bite, leads to the development of pneumonic plague. It's extremely contagious form, replicates in the lungs, um, can kill a patient in two days if it's untreated, uh, coughing, headache. So basically, like really, 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 really bad pneumonia. And then there is a septicemic plague. So in septicemic plague, bacteria replicates in the blood, in the patient's bloodstream. Uh, blood brings the bacteria to every organ of the human body and multiple organ failure it leads to very quick death. The mortality rate from untreated septicemic plague is basically 100%. Leprosy, so known as Hansen's disease, uh, caused by Mycobacterium leprae. Leprosy was pretty common uh, in Oceania, in Hawaii. Um, now it's still still happens in South America, India, different parts of Africa. The bacteria attacks the skin and the nerves and destroys the tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, um, muscle tissue, and a leprosy is curable, but it requires very long-term therapy, up to a year of antibiotics. Tuberculosis. A number one killer, infectious disease killer in the world, um, sorry, number two, number one is HIV, number two, 1.4 million people approximately die every year from tuberculosis in the world. So bacteria that belongs to the same genus as uh, Mycobacterium leprae, Mycobacterium tuberculosis is transmitted via respiratory route, it's very infectious. Only about 5% of infected people, though, develop the disease. It infects lungs, and the first symptoms, usually low-grade fever. And then when chronic pulmonary tuberculosis develops, the symptoms will include uh, bloody sputum, greenish sputum, weight loss, chest pain, fever, shortness of breath, night sweats. Uh, it can spread systemically and affect other organs. And extra pulmonary tuberculosis, systemic tuberculosis has very poor prognosis for patients. Uh, it strongly contributes to the death of people with, who live with AIDS, HIV AIDS. However, tuberculosis is treatable. Uh, it is quite notoriously antibiotic resistant, but it's treatable. MRSA, or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's resistant to um, Antibiotic methicillin, as well as other antibiotics from um, penicillin group, like amoxicillin or oxacillin. 
It's a common bacteria on the skin and in the respiratory tract. And uh, usually it causes the wound infections, which are extremely hard to treat. Um, not only, I mean, it's, it, it's treated with vancomycin, but there are other approaches to treat Staphylococcus aureus. It's a typical example of antibiotic that, um, uh, not antibiotic, sorry. It's a typical example of a bacteria that is a result of, you know, selection for antibiotic resistant uh, microorganisms. Uh, it is a, it's a typical hospital acquired infections infection it appeared in the hospital now we're going to talk about viruses so viruses are not alive they cannot reproduce They're the host cell they do not metabolize they are not composed of cells they don't have ribosomes so they do reproduce they do multiply inside of the cell virus is basically nucleic acid genetic material and the protein caps it so these two components, nucleic acid cap, uh, genome and the capsid, they comprise so-called naked virus. And some viruses, like coronavirus, in addition to genetic material, genome and the capsid, it also has envelope. So like your whatever you buy from Amazon comes in the Amazon box. So like extra layer. So um, some viruses, well known, well, coronavirus, how can we miss it? Smallpox, not existent anymore, chickenpox, flu, herpes, poliovirus, rabies, Ebola, HIV, AIDS is not a virus, it's a disease. Uh, along with viruses that can infect humans and animals, there are also viruses that can infect bacteria. So viruses are not bacteria therefore they cannot be treated with antibiotics so this um, picture represents shows you different types of viruses shape wise adenovirus cytomegalovirus or herpes two different viruses but they're very very um, related to each other bacteriophage virus that infects bacteria and Ebola virus quite unremarkable to be honest so um, viruses they enter the host cell or somehow deliver the nucleic acid into the host cell and then host cell starts to make virus okay and basically nucleic acid it instructs the cells how to make new virus since viruses are not cells not bacteria they are not affected by antibiotics and this is why nobody uh, prescribes antibiotics when you have viral infection uh, there are some antiviral drugs that block different steps of the life cycle replication cycle of the virus for example um, you may have heard about antiviral drugs like tamiflu or ribavirin now everybody talks about remdesivir so those antibiotic those antiviral drugs block different steps of life cycle for different viruses they are actually quite specific so this is a typical these are two typical life cycles for bacteriophage one is lytic cycle so here you can see virus injecting its nucleic acid into the cell and that nucleic acid should be the arrow should go here so nucleic acid um, is copied it's used as the blueprint it's transcribed and translated to make virus proteins virus particles assemble and they are released from bacterial cell and cell dies it's called lytic because bacterial cell dies lysed in the end sometimes though genome of the virus will be inserted into the DNA of a bacterial cell and it will replicate with the cell, reproduce with the cell effortlessly as cell divides. This is called lysogenic. So nucleic acid stays dormant in the host cell. Okay. 
Um, now, if we're going to go over the steps of the life cycle, we can say that the first stage, and let me clear. So first stage will be attachment, then penetration into the cell right here, then biosynthesis of the virus particles, assembly of the virus particles, and release of the virus particles in from the cell. That's for lytic cycle. Now for lysogenic attachment, penetration, incorporation of the prophage into the DNA of the host cell. At some point, prophage will get reactivated. It will, reactivation of a prophage is followed by the biosynthesis of the uh, viral nucleic acid and viral, viral proteins. Virus particles going to be assembled, virus will be released. You see the difference between lytic and lysogenic? Is that in lysogenic stage, lysogenic cycle, the death of the host cell is very much delayed. So first disease, polio, um, transmitted by fecal oral route, replicates in the gut, spills over in the nervous system, and causes paralysis. Um, usually paralysis affects lower limbs, but sometimes paralysis is total. The initial infection, actually uh, the paralysis uh, ensues in only about one out of 100 patients infected with polio, so generally just fever and fatigue and vomiting, and that's it. Um, infected people can spread the virus quite efficiently, and they shed this virus with feces, and the virus can stay functional in the environment for about a year. Uh, polio is vaccine preventable, completely vaccine preventable. And it's not present in the United States anymore, but there are still uh, foci of the infection. Now, since it was a, a, an older data, Pakistan and Afghanistan, Nigeria and India successfully um, crushed polio outbreaks in these countries. Measles, or sorry, I missed. Uh, measles is uh, the most infectious disease known to humans. It's the most contagious disease that we know. Um, usual symptoms, it's a respiratory transmitted and virus replicates in the respiratory tract. It does enter the blood actually. Uh, disease is characterized by fever, cough, runny nose. Uh, in severe cases may cause pneumonia and in most severe cases may lead to untreatable, uncurable, 100% uniformly lethal encephalitis. So that's the main problem. The disease is super transmissible and in some cases may lead to very serious consequences. Now, this disease is 100% vaccine preventable, but in order to protect us from such a easily transmittable disease, we need everybody to get a vaccine. Ebola. So Ebola virus is transmitted by direct contact with blood or bodily fluids of people who are infected. Uh, incubation period can be as short as two days and as long as 21 days. Uh, it's a typical hemorrhagic fever. Um, so very high fever, weakness, muscle and joint pain, headaches, vomiting, diarrhea, multiple hemorrhages and systemic um, organ failure. So there is there is a vaccine, experimental vaccine against Ebola, but Ebola is not very easily transmitted. That explains why we don't really have not don't really have huge pandemics or endemic uh, epidemics of Ebola virus infection. Flu. Influenza. So influenza, everybody had it. Respiratory transmitted virus uh, causes various respiratory symptoms from cough to actually viral pneumonia, muscle and joint aches, fever, lethargy, 
headaches. Um, circulating viruses found all over the world in humans uh, and in animals. Viruses from pigs and from birds can infect humans quite easily. Um, virus often can be spread from uh, an asymptomatic person, which makes influenza basically similar in that aspect to current coronavirus. And of course, it's the most famous. Uh, most famous influenza is the Spanish flu, 1918 outbreak that claimed lives of about 50 million people worldwide. So it was really a, a, a huge deal. Uh, it's a here on this map. It, it's originated in Spain, but in fact, we don't know. One hypothesis suggests that it actually originated in Kansas, but the first uh, widely publicized cases were discovered in Spain. Now there's a vaccine against the flu, but it's seasonal, which means that every year we have to get a new vaccine. Why? The virus changes from season to season, influenza changes, and the previous vaccine is probably not going to be effective next year. And that makes influenza quite unique. Uh, for instance, other viruses, measles, coronaviruses, virtually all of the mumps, they're all very genetically stable and they don't change much. Um, so the vaccine against measles, for instance, protects against measles for the lifetime. Vaccine against mumps, same story. So we can hope that coronavirus vaccine will give us sufficient immunity. Hantaviruses and West Nile viruses. So hantaviruses can be found in the region of four corners, United States, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah. Uh, it, it is carried by mice. And when mice poop and pee, um, and humans aerosolize that poop and pee by sweeping the floors, for instance, they inhale virus particles and virus, uh, hantavirus infection causes uh, really severe pneumonia, respiratory distress, and um, it's it's quite quite lethal. Now, West Nile virus, and there's no vaccine against hantavirus. West Nile virus is transmitted by mosquitoes from birds to humans. Uh, in humans, it causes biphasic disease. First phase is fever and very bad fever in the second case second phase is encephalitis inflammation of the um, brain and it leads to brain compression and possibly death um, vaccine for humans is not available but it is available for for instance horses and of course hiv so HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The symptoms of that disease, of AIDS, not just virus infection, AIDS, include weight loss, skin cancers, various opportunistic infections from tuberculosis to fungal pneumonias to anal cancers, fevers, night sweats, lymph node swelling, and fatigue. Transmission. HIV transmission, first of all, of course, sexual transmission. Okay. Uh, blood sharing needles, vertical transmission from mother to child, cross placenta and breast milk. Now, this is how the virus looks like. So it has a genome in the center, capsid and the envelope, that's enveloped virus. So virus infects CD4 T cells, cells of the immune system, and that basically kills those T cells and CD4 cells disappear and the immune system becomes heavily depressed. Virus is, HIV is latent. In this presentation, lysogenic is not a correct term, it's latent virus. 
So virus can incorporate its genome, copy of its genome, into the DNA of the cell. And the virus will stay dormant for years. And it cannot be removed from that cell. So um, this virus originally has RNA as the genetic material. But it is classified as retrovirus. And what does that mean? It means that it can copy RNA into DNA, which is very unusual. It's called reverse transcription. And the enzyme that copies RNA into double-stranded DNA is called reverse transcriptase. So here you can see the life cycle. Virus binds to the receptor on the surface of CD4 cells. Viral RNA enters the cell. And then it is copied into viral double-stranded DNA here. So the enzyme is reverse transcriptase. Double-stranded DNA, copy of the virus genome, enters the nucleus, where it is incorporated into the cellular DNA by the enzyme called integrase. I'm going to put the name of the enzyme, integrase. Integrase inserts viral DNA into the cellular DNA, and then virus stays there forever. It cannot be cleared from T cells, ever. And viral DNA here can be transcribed into RNA. RNA can be translated into virus proteins, and virus proteins will assemble into a virus particle. So what is AIDS? AIDS is the syndrome associated with HIV infection. So main symptoms of AIDS, and I'll go back here, main symptoms of AIDS, as I mentioned, will be mostly opportunistic infections, yeast infections, tuberculosis, fungal pneumonias, diarrhea. So people don't have HIV per se, they die because HIV depresses immune system so much. There's no vaccine against this infection, but there are treatments against HIV, and they are quite effective. Turns out, those treatments, and I'm going to change the color of the pencil, those treatments target this stage, attachment and fusion. Let me actually get rid of all the they can target attachment and fusion. They can target reverse transcription. They can target integration. And they can target maturation of the virion. And what's most remarkable about these treatments is that the life expectancy for patients with HIV who receive that highly effect active antiretroviral therapy is the same as for people who do not have HIV. So they will live just as long as people without HIV if they receive proper therapeutic intervention.